We're back with an Eagle Moss model for all this time. This is number 14 from the Star Trek Universe collection. This is the USS Nog. Here's a very controversial statement. I hate a sealed in box. Hi guys, Retro Trek Ralph here, finally back with another Star Trek Universe model, um, yeah, review magazine and model review. Before we get into the NOG, NCC 325071, right. The whole thing with Eagle Moss, they went bankrupt over a year ago. I never bought these. I could have quite easily have bought some of these on eBay, but with people being people and the prices of these going astronomical, there was always the idea of there's bankrupt stock around. There we go. Better. Bankrupt stock around. So, in the hope that I might get a bargain, did, and did get the next one as well, is... This is USS Nog. Um, Master Replicators bought all of the stock from Eagle Moss. Well, from the liquidator for Eagle Moss. So, <coughs> excuse me. This is to drop myself in it if I get a million people watching this. I'm not going to get a bargain. But, hey-ho, I've got to tell you guys anyway. MasterReplicas.com, I think it is. Ev well, the Sunday just gone past, which was the... 19th of March. They released 28 models. They've got containers all over the globe. They've, I think they've been trying to centralize them or at least put them in certain areas where they can easily distribute them from. 28 models were released. <sighs> this is number 14, the one before the last of the Star Trek Picard universe, whichever they were, they did basically put a load of kind of XL size models into one bit. But with Master Replicas taking over distribution of the stock, the old stock of these, hopefully that rattle is not broken parts. Um, yeah, I think they are releasing every two weeks. I get the impression, because they've got a timer on their website saying that it's going to end a week on Friday. A lot of stock went very quickly of the 28 models that they actually had, or they'd sorted out, shall we say. There was an XL Cerritos, missed that one. There was a standard size Titan, missed that one. There are some other XLs as well. I do want the XLs, but I don't at the same time. The, the XL ones oh, would look amazing displayed. However, the prices are relatively good for what Edel Moss stock is, was, whatever. But I haven't got the money. I really haven't got the money. And if what I get the idea of every, every other Friday, they'll be releasing new stock. Or they'll be getting rid of that stock and then giving us another, let's say, another 28 different models to buy from. It makes it easier to buy, shall we say. But I bought two in the latest sale, and that's going to be looked at in a moment. So as I usually do, or did at least, let's get on with the model. USS Nog, um, NCC 325070. This is obviously the um, Eisenberg class after the character of Nog and the actor who played him in Deep Space Nine, which is an absolutely massive nod to him. I've got the wrong light on there. That's fine. I'll try and get it in the way a little bit. That's fine. So it shows it's it's 1,212 meters long. I don't think it's got detached um, nacelles. I could be wrong. They're very long. That part on there looks like I did a model for the the Lego model for the N1 Starfighter for Mandalorian. But also a big massive bulge area on there. I'd be interested to see what's on here. But I would also like to be able to turn off one of the lights so you can see a bit better. There we go. It's a little bit grainy, but unfortunately, this is the best we have. No, this is, yeah, I did, I've not done one of these models for a while. So let's get on with this. I mean, yes, it is a weird looking ship, but you've still got the standard nacelles, pylons, a big massive area of what the ship is, but it's such 
strange design for the for the 32nd century. The card series now is up to the 25th century, which is really good. I'm guessing they are detached nacelles, potentially. The different modes, maybe? I don't know. We didn't see much of the Nog, unfortunately. It was kind of there, like in the entire Series 3 of Discovery, where you've got so many different models, ships, designs. Everything's a different design. It's absolutely weirdly ridiculous how they did the Starfleet Command. Yeah, but the Nog is there. We did see that as, as the Voyager J as well. And if I get a Voyager J, oh, oh yeah, I'd be, it'd be immense to get that. But these possibly may be with the Master Replicas. That's a nice picture. Yeah. With the Master Replicas re redistribution, shall we say, in the next one. Right, I'll be interested, because the next one is, is that one anyway. Liu Xin. I don't know. Um, sorry, my pronunciation is rubbish. I wonder if... Actually, that, isn't that the ship that destroyed Utopia Panicia? And that's a... a no, mm, OK. So I'll be interested to know in the next one what that next issue is, which they never went to number 16, because this is number 15, and, yeah... Let's zoom out a little bit. Feel these buttons out. Yeah, this is number 14. 15 is as far as they went, which is the model I showed you earlier. 16 they never did. The thing with it is they got so many cancelled, because I'm going to look at the internet now at the moment. There was a USS Jubaria. Pronounce this wrong. USS Armstrong, very much like Constitution class. Um, yeah, the synth attack ship. The Dressel House. Very strange ship. The Tikoff, which looked like the back end of the... Uh, if you're not a big Blake 7 fan, it looks like a back end of the Liberator. USS Anan, which was the big ring ship that you could see in the, in this, this, yeah, in the series. USS Curry, which has got four detached nacelles. And the Hunar, Hunharu transport ship, which I think got um, Book and others off the... Sh the um, the planet that they're held prisoner on. So, ah, oh, okay. So, potentially, this is broken. I might have to get the stand out for this, because this looks like it just sits on it, but I thought it didn't. So, as I did before, ah, 1913A slash A. So it is a first run. These can't be any more than that, because these were the end of the line for everything. I do hope this isn't broke. I think these went up here. Yeah, these will have been mounted up here. And that goes on like that. Okay, so that's how it's made with packs, so they've come out of the packaging, because, yeah, probably not much to hold them in with. So let's get on with this. This, this is... Sometimes I wonder how Eagle Moss went under, and sometimes I, it, it's... I did an interview with um, Dan's mix, uh, yeah, DMU, Dan's mixtape universe, Dan's yeah, model universe. Yeah, he rebranded a little bit, which is great, and it was brilliant talking to him. And it was all about the Eagle Moss stuff. And yeah, there were the I knew there was stuff going wrong with them because of delivery dates that were missed, and there were there were just promises that they never could keep. But there's stuff on like with this. It's I don't get how they could have. Yeah, there's some really lovely detail on there. The, the, the gap on the between the 7 and the O, part of my fingernails, because that's really close in. It's really good. Let's get a sideways going in there. Strange part on top of there, grid. But then you've got black decks, probably armoured, but not exactly um, straight. But this is the whole design. Actually, is that, is that probably one of the best window alignments we've seen on Ingleboss? Yeah, well, we discuss things about Eagle Moss, about the timing, about the collection. Yeah, I do love the collection, the amount of times that I actually have a go at them. But usually it's down to the wind alignment. Usually it's down to it taking forever for the deliveries to turn up, which is fine. USS Nog on there as well. United Federation Planets. The lovely red 
markings on there. This is this is probably one of the best models I've seen. Massive panel gap there as well, but let's have a look at the other side. Is there anything? Yeah, not as much as. But these are really ah, there's a winner alignment missing right there. There you go. I mean, this this isn't bad at all for what this ship is, and this is an I do not know how this thing flies. This is absolutely balmy. Now I have to. I'm ignoring this stand, but I have to put this on the stand. So this will go. Okay, that's been moulded to go into there like that. But the thing with it, I assume these nacelles are the same. No, they're not. You've got the markings on the outside of that and the outside of that. So that's port and starboard. So I need to put... There will be one where these go on. Oh, hello. How on earth do these fit on here? Okay. They don't go that way, they go that way. How on the name of anything do those nacelles actually fit on there? Let's have a look at the page on here. Hmm, okay. Right, so... That was forward, correct? Yes. So, if the lettering goes to the side... Oh, they go sideways. And they fly off. This is the, the biggest problem with these detached nacelles. They go in kind of that way. Okay, so they don't click into place, they just sit. So as a display model, this is going to be okay. So it goes sideways again. So those bits there lip over. So these bits on the inside of here will be the parts that it electrically attached to. So there we have it. There's the nog. And I can't show you the side view of it, unless I hold in... Ah, there we go. See, she's a nice-looking ship, to be honest. Very oddball, very weirdly futuristic. And I don't know. There's a weird thing on the back corner there. Can we see that now? Some lovely design work on here. But I think they'll have gone... Excuse me, but you wonderful design artists out there... Go ballistic. You've had um, the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th century. This is the 32nd. We've already done bits with the uh, relativity and stuff like that. I want you to go ballistic with your designs. And they did. Because this might be a 29th century ship. I don't know. I've not looked, looked into this as much. It does say launch 20, 32nd, according to the book right there. But it's not saying that this was an older ship. And then it's just being kept along just for the ride. I mean, you've got the, the USS Curry that was meant to come out with four detached nacelles, which was NCC 81890-J. Uh, so it's a, it's a model a few after the, um, the Voyager. I can't show you any more than that. That's weird. It's nice. Nice weird. I'll zoom out a little bit more so I can see more. But it's... It's a good... Ship, I just um, this is the first one of the, the one with detached nacelles I've actually got hold of so far. All I'd think is maybe put a little bit of double sided tape on there and just sit these in place, but the whole stand and whatever, yeah, it's meant to look like they're off, but it, they are the weirdest thing. But it would have been better if you've got some sort of electrical energy sort of thing connecting it to one side to the other. I'm sure they could 3D print something, if I had a 3D printer, just to attach one side to the other. But yeah, that's really, really, a really nice ship. A year late, obviously. If I get more of these, it will be as soon as I get hold of them and we'll see what happens with these. So yeah, Master Replicas, they are doing, I, oh, they did, <coughs> excuse me, I haven't got COVID. Um, they did one, of the Orville ships, I think it was the Orville. And that went like gone as well anyway. So they are doing more of the collection. I am looking forward to a Space 1999 because I love the Eagle ship and I have a model I need to get on with and build. But 
yeah, it, it's tricky to do and tricky to get started with not having time to do anything lately. So, yeah, that is the number 15 of the Star Trek Universe collection. Correction, number 14, the USS Nog. I will try and get the others. I think we were up to... I think we were up to the Wallenberg, or I might have had the Romulan flagship. I'm not sure. But um, this, like I said, this was meant to have been released in um, February last year. But it was released, it was around, but then it just went, and there was, wasn't much distributed, so the prices went ballistic. So apologies for not bringing it as, as early as, as what I could have done. I am not a millionaire. So with that in case, <laughs> in mind, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on social media. Consider being a Patreon to help me out every month. Consider be donating something to the channel. Anything, anything, anything will do. I don't mind at all. So I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.